Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Treasurer. And um, perhaps if you move across to the, the red hot seat. Um, I noticed when I came in late this afternoon, just checking on the room, the, um, <coughs> the colour of the seats, and then I realised that uh, also Nick did a great job with colour coding the uh, Australian Post colour. But um, we weren't quite sure what colour to put on this, uh, on uh, Dr. Ruth Felmingham's chair, but we decided to go for a, for a match. It now gives me pleasure to uh, introduce to the uh, podium, Dr. Bruce Felmingham. Many of you will know him as a, uh, uh, an academic, as well as uh, a very strong and sound economist who has a great passion and interest in this state, and a public commentator as well. When we were um, thinking as who we could perhaps put the, uh, the pressure questions to the Treasurer, it was fairly obvious that, uh, that Bruce was well qualified for this area. I'll just quickly explain the format of what's going to happen now. <coughs> Excuse me. But before I do so, I just remind you that there is a, a prize for a business card draw, and I think there'll be some um, containers moving around. If you haven't already deposited your business card, you can do that. The format is that uh, for approximately 10 minutes, then um, Dr. Bruce Bellingham will ask questions that He's developed, which he believes uh, we'll, we'll call those the hard questions. We thought we'd uh, let the Treasurer get off early, as, uh, get those hard questions out of the way early. Then, uh, over the last few weeks, we put out to members of TCCI a request for questions, of which we've received some and we've refined some of those. And then we're hoping to have, uh, if there's enough time, 10 minutes for open questions from the floor. Um, and we'll just judge that time a little bit. Uh, um, and we'll see how we go in the first two. So I'm now going to hand over to uh, you both got a mic, I think, that I'm sure we'll be doing. And so I'll just stand in the background, uh, come in and pull them apart if they start fighting, and uh, over to you, Bruce. Thank you, Laura. Thanks. I'm glad we're alone together, Mike. Well, I don't know if it's really a good experience in front of 400 people. No. <laughs> Uh, my first question, there are three questions that, that uh, I've, I've thought of here today, which I think are significant. One on productivity, one on energy, one on infrastructure. Now, the budget is predominantly affected by public sector wage increases, which are very significant in Tasmania. Soon, they will constitute 55% of the Tasmanian budget. Uh, and if you add in unfunded but superannuation liabilities, you get something higher. That actually is a ratio that is larger than any other studies in Australia. I haven't checked the territories yet. So that's a fairly significant issue. And from the point of view of the business community, given that uh, they're in competition for employees, uh, the, we, we need a way, I think, of rationalising public sector wage claims. A standard economic principle uh, is to set a wage on the basis of marginal productivity of labour that will maximise employment. Um, can I ask, the question therefore is this, uh, has there been in past negotiations with the union movements and otherwise any reference productivity gains in relation to wage increases? Um, the short answer to that is yes. Um, but the, and the longer answer is that um, uh, we have always trying to um, make sure that our public sector is properly remunerated um, for the services they provide. There are a number of uh, issues which relate to Tasmania in terms of delivery of service. Um, the Commonwealth Grants Commission acknowledged that we do have, because of our uh, geography, our demographics and the spread of the population, 
that um, it costs us more to deliver services to our community than the United States. That's why we get um, assistance through um, the Commonwealth Grants Commission process to acknowledge that. Um, it does cost us more. The other thing is, in, in smaller jurisdictions, um, we still need um, a certain critical mass to deliver uh, the services to the community. And that, um, it doesn't matter if it's a, a you know, in terms of bureaucratic terms, you need people to support the delivery of services out in the field. Um, we have, we've uh, made headway into that. In fact, um, in David Bartlett's time uh, as Minister for Education, uh, the cost of off-school um, expenses uh, was uh, reduced dramatically. I think we were at the top of the pile. We're now the second lowest, and that um, the, we, those benefits have gone directly back into schools. You know, that, that's um, one of the things we are conscious of, and uh, we, we talk about, um, you know, we will allow for 3% indexation, wage indexation, um, through this uh, budget and the forward estimates. We talk about uh, a lot, and uh, when the agencies come to the budget committee, uh, we um, uh, ask questions of those uh, line agencies about how they are delivering services, are there more efficient ways of delivering services. And, um, I, you know, it wasn't so long ago that I was up here and um, I was being accused about um, not funding disability services, I think some people might recall that. And that um, we, we um, not as a response to that particular day, but we have had a major reform of disability services where um, the government now is funding non-government organisations to provide a range of services. And that, um, so we are conscious of where we can um, to deliver services in a better way and a more efficient way you know, and in terms of uh, your uh, uh, economic background in terms of being uh, more productive than they can be. Second point, uh, and it's a burning issue at the moment, is the energy sector and energy supply. And uh, I think it's worrying to a lot of Tasmanians because of our long iconic history and interest in hydro itself. Uh, in fact, looking at the current situation, we understand why desegregation occurred in 1998. We're not sure, just as privatisation of energy systems and other states, um, we're not sure whether it was a good, good thing or not, but we're stuck with it now. And the question is, uh, that I put to you, uh, how, what approach will you have to restructuring the energy supply system? Could you just leave it to the market, or is there some other thing? And is the issue of privatisation potentially back on the agenda? No. Um, no, the Premier made a, a very uh, clear statement, unequivocal statement, that um, that is not on the agenda. Uh, what, what is on the agenda, however, is that um, we know that um, historically we, we want actually the market forces to work in terms of uh, competitive pressure to uh, de provide a better deal to the consumer. Uh, you yeah, have to say in an analysis so far that there has been market failure and that's why we've had to take action to use um, a regulatory uh, position to stabilise the, 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 the failure, if you like, and to make sure that Aurora is viable into the longer term. Uh, we are going to establish uh, an expert panel. Um, part of the Price Waterhouse review, uh, which has been much talked about as though it's um, uh, a magic wand, it's not. It is about the structure of um, what uh, what the businesses could look like in the future. Um, what has happened there? The price waterhouse so review is in a draft form. Uh, it has gone to a, a, a group uh, in the bureaucracy, and they are now preparing a cabinet submission based on that report. And when we get that, then we will respond to that. 